Today we're going to reflect on the uh, what is referred to as the Last Supper, the last meal that Jesus had with his followers before he died. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 7 to 20. The day of unleavened bread came, the day the Passover lamb was butchered. Jesus sent Peter and John off saying, go prepare the Passover for us so we can eat it together. They said, where do you want us to do this? And Jesus said, keep your eyes open as you enter the city. A man carrying a water jug will meet you. Follow him home. Then speak with the owner of the house. The teacher wants to know where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples. He will show you a spacious second story room swept and ready. Prepare the meal there. They left and found everything just as Jesus had told them and prepared the Passover meal. When it was time, Jesus sat down, all the apostles with him and said, you've no idea how much I've looked forward to eating this Passover meal with you before I enter my time of suffering. It's the last one I'll eat until we all eat it together in the kingdom of God. Taking the cup, Jesus blessed it and then said, take this and pass it among you. As for me, I'll not drink wine again until the kingdom of God arrives. Taking bread, Jesus blessed it, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Eat it in my memory. Jesus did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant written in my blood poured out for you. As I reread this passage, I was struck by the fact that Jesus clearly knew that this was the last meal he would have with the disciples. He knew that he was going to suffer and that he was going to die. So if he knew these things, then what he chose to do in those last few hours he had with the disciples must be significant. The fact that this was the Passover meal was also significant, I think. Each year for around 1300 years, the Israelites celebrated God freeing them from slavery in Egypt. God had instructed them to sacrifice a lamb, eat its meat and sprinkle its blood around the door frame of their homes. The lamb's blood had protected them when the final plague had resulted in the death of all the firstborn in the houses not protected by the lamb's blood. The Passover represented the Old Covenant. And under the Old Covenant, we're told in Hebrews chapter 10, that every priest goes to work at the altar each day, offers the same old sacrifice year in, year out, and never makes a dent in the sin problem. The cup is the new covenant written in my blood, poured out for you. They were the final words of the passage I read. A covenant. A covenant is a, a legal document, a written legal document, and something like a will of a person is a cover, has covenants in it. And like a will that take, takes effect when someone dies, the new covenant was put into action at Jesus' death. His death marked the transition from the old plan to the new one, cancelling the old obligations and accompanying sins and summoning the heirs to receive an eternal inheritance that was promised them. He, Jesus, brought together God and his people in this new way. That is a message translation of Hebrews chapter 9 verses 16 and 17. Under the new covenant, we're told also in Hebrews, but at chapter 10, as a priest, Christ made a single sacrifice for sins, and that was it. It was a perfect sacrifice by a perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people. By that single offering, he did everything that was needed to be done for everyone who takes part in the purifying process. The old covenant was only for the Israelites and no one else. The new covenant is for everyone who takes part in the purification process. 
Jesus took the bread and the wine at the last meal he was to eat with his disciples. He declared that it was his body broken for them and that the cup represented the new covenant poured out in his blood for them. And in fact, for each of us ever since. By that single offering, he did everything that needed to be done for everyone, everyone who takes part in the purifying process. So Jesus was inviting his disciples and all of his followers then and ever since to share in the bread and the wine to remember his body given for us and his blood poured out for us. This new covenant and unlike the Passover, we don't need to do this once a year. We can do it whenever believers meet together. Participating in the bread and wine together as believers is, in my view, an act of thanksgiving. A declaration and acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour and indeed as King. And it's a reminder that we must ask for forgiveness through the blood of Jesus that was shed as a sacrifice for the things that we've got wrong. It's a recognition that it is only the shed blood of Jesus that can restore us to relationship with God. A relationship broken by sin and disobedience. And it's a reminder of what Jesus did for each of us. And it's something we do in remembrance of Jesus until he comes again in glory. It's a reminder that under the new covenant we are joint heirs with Jesus and will receive life and an eternal inheritance that has been promised through this new covenant written in Jesus blood. The believers participation in the bread and the wine recognizing that they symbolize Jesus body broken for you and for me and his blood poured out for us is indeed highly significant. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us when we take the bread and wine together that you died for us, that through no merit on our part, we might inherit eternal life. Thank you for giving us the wine to represent your blood poured out for us as a perfect sacrifice by a perfect person to perfect some very imperfect people like me. And thank you that for everyone who accepts you, that by that single offering, Jesus, you did everything that needed to be done and that we can still take part in the sharing of the bread and the wine as a celebration of thanks for your sacrifice for everyone who will accept you. Jesus, you are our Lord, our Saviour and our King. You are worthy of our worship, our praise, our adoration and our obedience. Amen. Oh,